December 3rd, 2020 City Council meeting. It is officially called to order and today we will start with the chaplain prayer and pledges which will be led by Tommy Tallis who is a police department chaplain. So Tommy, if you would please come forward and lead us in prayer and pledge. Today is kind of a unique situation, as you might recognize with not only the meeting of the city council, but also election day. Uh, and I would like to begin prior to this prayer with this text from Timothy. It says, I urge you, first of all, to pray for all people. Ask God to help them, intercede on their behalf, and give thanks for them. Pray this way for kings and all who are in authority, so that we can live peaceful and quiet lives marked by godliness and dignity. This is good and pleases God our Savior, who wants everyone to be saved and to understand the truth. Uh, it's a good lesson for us all as we uh, come before this body here and as we come before our nation. So uh, the prayer this morning will include not only a prayer for this meeting, but also a prayer for this election. So will you bow with me as, as we continue? Father, I thank you for the men and the women who have sought the opportunity to serve the people of our city and our nation. I thank you for our mayor, for the various levels of city officials, and in particular for this assembled council. I pray for the agenda set before them today. Give them wisdom and insight of what, they would, of what would please you and what would benefit those who live and work in and around our beloved city of San Angelo. Help them to act with character and conviction. Help them to listen with understanding and goodwill. Help them to speak with charity and restraint. Give them a spirit of service. Remind them that they are to be stewards of the authority granted to them by the people of this city. Grant them to be the leaders your people need. Help them to see the humanity and the dignity of those who disagree with them and to treat all persons, no matter how weak or poor, with the reverence your creation deserves. And finally, Father, renew them with the strength of your presence and the joy of helping to build a community worthy of its citizens. Lord, on this election day, and as the events of this day continue to unfold, we seek your clarity and your peace. We know that you are with us and for us, and we gather to seek your counsel. We ask your divine intervention for a peaceful and orderly election. We pray that you would be honored by the process and the results of this election. Your word tells us your plan is not to harm us, but to give us a hope and a future. We believe you and we believe your word and we thank you for your faithfulness and your everlasting love. And so we ask for your special hedge of protection over our nation and all its people this day and for this very important outcome, whatever it may be. Lord, we thank you for humbling yourself as you chose to walk alongside us as a man. Help our incumbent and our newly elected leaders to be willing to walk alongside each other and their constituents. We know that our leaders have different opinions and priorities, but we pray that you give them the wisdom to navigate differences and to work together to strengthen our country. Remind us in this election year that you have called Christians to be one body. May there be a new movement of collaboration and respect in our nation's capital and throughout the country. We pray these things in the name of your Son, who came to give us peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. amen. Now will you join me as we have our pledges of allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. Thank you. You may be seated. Thank you very much, Tommy. Today, this is a very rare occasion because we have no proclamations 
or recognitions today. So we will move into the public comment part of the agenda. I will first ask if there's anyone in the audience who would like to offer any public comment. If not, I would like to share a few comments and some numbers uh, provided to us by Shane Plymel of Community Medical Center. But first, let me, Shane, what I say? Shane, Shannon, right? I think I got all that confused somehow. Too many yeses in there. Thank you for that. I want to thank all of our citizens for their commitment to take personal responsibility to ensure our economy stays strong. I want to thank everyone for supporting our business community so they can continue to be successful. And I want to thank our citizens for their commitment to take personal responsibility so that they may remain healthy. Your commitment ensures your family, friends, and neighbors are safe. This past seven-day period, we had the highest number of tests since uh, we started tracking the COVID testing. And so we had 2,314 tests administered, and that was up by 36 from the previous week. And the previous week was up 173 from the week of 10-9. And from the week of 10-2, it was up 70, uh, plus 170, or plus 79. So we continue to increase the number of tests given, which obviously would result in a number of positive cases with that. Our positivity rate is now at 15.9%. We've talked about the 15% line, meaning that is an area, a time period when we uh, exceed 15% that we should all be concerned about um, our community. And that 15.9% is up from 137 the week before and up from 10.1 the week before that. So we've gone from 10-2 or October the 2nd from a 7.7% positivity rate up to the 10-30 time period of 15.9%. This past week we had 376 positive cases and that was up from 317 the week before and that was up from 230 the week before that. Positive cases by age group. We continue to see the age group of 20 to 29 being one of the areas with the greatest growth from the week before. But in all cases, from uh, 0 to 19 up to 60 to 69, the cases continue to increase. The 70-plus number of cases continues to stay stable and is not increasing. Our hospitalizations, and this is a key, key number because it is a number that the governor has asked us to really stay on top of. So at this point, we have 37 people in the hospital, seven of which are in ICU. That is down one from the week before. And as a percent, that is uh, around 6% of the hospital capacity. So today or as of uh, yesterday, we are still in a good position as it relates to hospitalizations. The pending lab tests, meaning those that we don't have results back, have increased from 38 the week before up to 186. And so what we do again is ask everyone to take personal responsibility to help us as a city to continue to move forward and have a safe community. So thank you for that commitment. We will now move into the consent agenda. I will start by asking uh, council members if they have items that they would like to pull from the consent agenda. I'll start with Billy. Uh, yes, Mayor, item F. F, okay. Lane. Oh, Ma'am. Lucy. Uh, item N. N. Harry. O. O. Tom. Nothing to pull. Tommy. No, Ma'am. Okay. We will start then by asking for a motion to approve all of the consent agenda with the exception of F, O, and N. So may I have that motion? So moved, ma'am. Billy has made the motion. Second. And a second by Lucy. With that, any public comment? With no public comment, we'll take a vote. All in favor of approving the consent agenda with the exception of items F, O and N say aye. Aye. With none opposed, the consent agenda is approved. We will start with item F. Consider ratifying a resolution authorizing the use of sales and use tax funds in an amount not to exceed $150,000 to provide an economic development incentive matching grant with Ethicon Incorporated and Principal LED LLC to SME Education Foundation for its SME Prime Next Generation Manufacturing, Fabrication, and Engineering Talent High School or similar program for high school students in the city of San Angelo. Guy, thank you for coming forward. Um, do I have, Billy, did you pull item F? I did, Would yes, you thank ask, you, ma'am. Um, address your concerns or questions? Good morning, Guy, how are you? Good, thank you. Um, as I was telling you a little bit earlier, I was so excited reading about this program and I wanted to hear just, you know, kind of a brief summary. I guess it's maybe my HR background, but when you talk about training and development, and especially starting in high school, um, to give, you know, our young people a career path that, you know, if they aren't necessarily prone to be formal college 
for your college students. I thought this program sounded so fascinating. So I not wanted to hear your summary of it and kind of the timing of when you think it will uh, be moving forward. And, you know, are there any obstacles or anything that the council should consider, you know, at this point other than approving, you know, this grant? Hey, thank you. Thank you for pulling uh, this particular item to give us an opportunity to talk about it because we're very excited about the program as well. SME Prime stands for Society of Manufacturing Engineers, Partners in Manufacturing Education. And what that does is it allows a partnership between the San Angelo Independent School District, our manufacturing partners, Ethicon, Principal LED, uh, to come together to provide uh, education within our high school system. Uh, this will be provided to uh, all campuses. The training will actually be held at the West Texas Training Center. And uh, also the, the students will be able to actually get certification. What makes this program exciting for us is that it, for the first time it really involves our local employers and provides an opportunity for students to interface with those, uh, those companies, uh, Ethicon and Principal LED to obtain that education, to have apprenticeships so that they can not just be trained and move off someplace else to, uh, to serve in a manufacturing capacity, but to serve San Angelo itself. The, this is the initial program. There are only two of these high schools. Uh, San Angelo will be the second high school in the state of Texas with this program. It's administered by the SME uh, Prime Foundation uh, that has courses set up and that sort of thing, but uh, it's really dependent on what our local manufacturers want. Over time, those uh, partners will change uh, in this initial uh, three-year period. Uh, Ethicon and Principal LED are putting up $150,000 uh, for this program uh, with the Development Corporation putting up $150,000 to get the program off the ground. So I'd be glad to answer any other questions that you, you might have. And the timing, Guy? The, the timing is uh, there has to be curriculum developed, and uh, that's already uh, being done through the San Angelo Independent School District. And so uh, the program will begin next year in, in 2021. Thank you. Lucy, I think you had a question. Yes, Guy. How many uh, students are we talking about? Well, it will really depend on how many want to pursue that, but uh, the initial estimates that we got from uh, the school district is about 200 students. That's a lot. That's a lot of, that's that's a lot of students. And again, they will travel to the uh, West Texas Training Center for this, just as they do in other uh, type programs. Another aspect of this, too, is, is not just training if you want to go directly into that vocation from high school, there's that aspect of it. But if you wanted to become a manufacturing engineer, these courses are all valuable in preparing you for a higher education in, in that discipline. How does that relate to dual credit? Uh, I'm not or it doesn't? Uh, well, I'm not exactly sure how that would happen. Yeah. This would be part of well, dual credit, I think, pertains to students taking high school and, and then in college. Uh, that's a good question, and I'll, I'll have to find the answer to that when I hadn't actually thought of that aspect of it. You would hope that not only would they provide the right. training, but they would benefit from it right. um, education-wise in terms right. of courses. Correct. Other questions from City Council? Okay, with none, uh, would you like to go ahead and make that motion, Billy? Yes, I move that we approve item F on the consent agenda. And a second, please. Second. A second by Tommy. Any public comment? With none, we'll take a vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 With none opposed, motion passes 7 Very much. 0. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. We will now move into item um, N. And item N is as follows. Consider amending the Low Income Assistance Program Agreement with Concho Valley Community Action Agency 
to allow customers to receive assistance twice annually and to increase funding for 2020 by $100,000 with CARES Act Coronavirus Relief Funds. Allison, you're up. And Lucy, do you have questions? I don't have any questions. Allison, I just wanted you to explain this item to the viewers so they'll be able to know what is available, what resources we have available for them in case they need help. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Um, so in July of 2019, we entered into a contract or agreement with Concha Valley Community Action Agency. We provide $50,000 of funding annually on January of each year. Um, with 2020, uh, that those funds were used almost all completely before mid-March, which is when the, I would say the true effects of the COVID or coronavirus in Tom Green County or San Angelo area took its effects starting then. Um, so funding wasn't available for the economic hardships that people experienced after that. Um, Concho Valley Community Action Agency has um, been granted their own um, funds that they have used, and they utilized all of those up, and they said there are still people in great need uh, for utility assistance. Uh, this program requires that they be within the 150% of the poverty level based on the number of people in their household. Um, and so uh, we wanted to amend the contract so that those that maybe receive funding in January or February, if they're still going through those hard times right now, that they can receive uh, assistance again. And um, really just to add more money into this um, into this program. Uh, we will be, I've already discussed with Brian and Lorelai following the approval of this uh, agenda item, we would you know, obviously try to promote that and encourage people uh, who need that assistance to go to the action agency. And I know that the uh, Contra Valley Community Action Agency also does their own campaigning when they receive additional funds. How many months in a row may someone apply for it? Is it a one-time, one-month assistance? Currently, the agreement states one time per year, so one time annually. Um, and so that's why we're wanting to amend it to twice annually. Okay, do I have questions or comments from anybody else on council? Okay, with none, Lucy, would you like to make a motion? Yes, ma'am. I move that we approve item N on the consent agenda. Do I have a second? Second. Second, second by Lane. All in favor? Oh, any public comment? With no public comment, we'll take a vote. All in favor, say aye. Aye. With none opposed, motion passes 7-0. Thank you. We will now move into item O, consider approving an amendment to the lease agreement between the City of San Angelo and Golden Antlers Incorporated, the Spring Creek Marina lease, modifying the section entitled Prohibited Events and authorizing the City Manager to negotiate and execute all related documents. Carl, you're up. Yes, Carl White, Parks and Recreation Director. <clears throat> We're working on an, an amendment to the lease agreement. It basically takes out the <clears throat> existing clause that prohibits any events at that property except as approved by city council. In replacing that clause would be uh, that events would only have to come for approval of city council if are, they are to waive any ordinances such as the noise ordinance. Um, and then also adding a year to his uh, payment plan uh, because of COVID-19. And um, he, it would require him to um, develop a simple security and traffic plan for that property, which is not unlike the, what the Stock Show Radio Association does for their big event every year around that property. Um, we do have concerns about safety because of its unique location. It's basically a peninsula that sticks out into the lake. There's basically one way in, one way out, unless we open up an, an access road. So, Is an a, a, another access road able to be opened up? Does yes, it exist? It, yes, it, through with, co with coordination with the city. That road is not part of the, his lease property, but it is city property. We could, we could open it up for access. So that would make sense to do? It, it would, but we would just, he would have to coordinate that with us. Yes. Okay. Harry, I think you pulled this item, so you probably have a question. Really, the only thing I wanted to do was make sure that the citizens understood what this new proposal entails and what it prohibits. Uh, it, it, it saves a lot of phone calls uh, on, the, on the backside if they know what we're, what we're approving right now. Uh, I know Tommy gets big, big time, 
and for some reason or other, they think that this councilman can can do a lot of stuff in a lot of areas in the community, so I do also. So I just wanted citizens to understand what it entails and what it prohibits. Okay. So with that, I'll make a motion to approve as presented. All right, with that, do I have a second? Second. And there's a second by Tommy, I think. Any public comment? With none, we will take a vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Motion passes 7-0. Thank you. <coughs> We will now move into, that concludes the consent agenda, so we will now move into the regular agenda. Comments regarding items on the regular agenda may be made by the public when each item is discussed as outlined above. Applicants, proponents, and appellants are expected, are accepted from the time limit above and must limit their remarks to less than five minutes. So with that, we will go into item A. Consider approving an infield empowerment zone request for infrastructure funding for up to 50% of, of costs for water lines, sewer lines, fire hydrant, and roadway construction costs in an amount not to exceed 136400 for the Denny edition, Section 2. Uh, presentation is made by Elisa Denny. Introduction made by Planning Development Services, John James. Thank you, uh, John James. I just wanted to uh, make a couple of points before Ms. Denny comes up. Um, as is noted in your packet, if you recall, we created an infill program that allowed for uh, $5,000 per new home that's constructed in the designated infill areas. Then sometime after that, we created this second program that allows a developer to come to you all to request uh, basically additional funding. Uh, they can pick one of the two programs. The 5,000 is an automatic. If you come in in an infill area with a new home, you're guaranteed the $5,000 as, as long as funding is still available. With this program that Ms. Denny is applying for, this is the second program wherein she presents to you uh, a proposal and what you're authorized uh, under the program to do is fund up to 50% of infrastructure costs. That could be water, sewer, roads, uh, et cetera. And so uh, I just wanted to remind you of the two different programs. And, and one other point, um, you have set aside $200,000 for this program for this current year. Um, I guess three homes have been pre-authorized already, so that's $15,000. So basically what you have left for the remainder of the year is about $185,000 uh, for both of these programs. That, um, that one set of funding covers both programs. It's not two separate funding sources. So with that, I'll turn it over to Ms. Denny to make her request. Mayor, can I ask a question yes, for you John? Yes, you may. So John, tell me right this. What happens at uh, end of our budget year? When does our budget year quit so this infill would replenish? October 1st. Okay. And so we've just started a new year with the new $200,000. So it's got to go basically 11 months. All right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Good morning, Mayor, Council Members. My name is Elisa Noel Denny, and I'm here today to uh, ask for special consideration as it relates to the infill development program. As we just learned, there are two separate wings, I guess I'll call it, of that particular program. Uh, when we talked about the $15,000 that's already been allocated for uh, 2020 at this point, I am one of those homes, right? So I, I applied and, and will receive $5,000 for the very first home, which will be uh, established in the uh, Rio Concho, I'm sorry, Rio Rancho. <laughs> Wonder where I got that name, huh? Um, and so basically what I'm proposing is I am proposing that we go ahead and um, grant me the money so that we're able to move forward with our plan for the 16 single family homes that you previously authorized. You may recall that had to do with my partnership with Baptist Memorial. And my moving homes into that area. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what I can tell council, and the reason that I'm confident that you'll agree with my request, is that with my um, establishment of 17 family, single family homes in this area, this is something that basically prior to my entering into this endeavor has been non-existent. Case in point, 
You want to stop a minute because you keep repeating the number of houses, and yet the slide says 11 houses. So I think at one point you said 16, now it's 17. So I, we need to know what is yes. the number of homes because it's very confusing with the numbers you've just given. I understand completely. So what I'm here to talk about today is the specific development as it relates to my um, building a new city street, okay, off of Roosevelt, running north and south, um, to towards Culbertson. And as that relates, there are 11 lots, and I don't know if anyone is able to share, reshare that plat with you. If not, I did bring paper copies as well, if anyone would like to see it. But basically, there's two phases to this development. This part is phase two. The other part that I mentioned earlier that I've already taken advantage of when we broke ground on home one, the overall plan encompasses 16 homes. So forgive me, I digress. Some of those homes are going to be to the left of Buchanan. Those I will apply for on a single basis based on the fact that it's more accessible to water and sewer versus the lots that I'm here to talk to you about today are going to be towards Florence, in other words, to the east between Buchanan and Florence. Okay. We would establish a new city street down the middle. Shall I grab the paperwork? The paperwork won't help us. We really need a slide. Yes, I apologize. I, um, I apologize. I do not Closer to the mic microphone. I apologize. I do not have that for you. Ooh, okay. okay. That's a little <laughs> bit better. I was already struggling with the mask. Um, I will be happy to um, submit. It's already on file. Obviously, we've, we've kind of, we've been down this road a little bit because you guys had voted on this and approving my being able to even be a part of the infill program. Um, feel like a bank robber. Um, at any rate, what I'm asking for basically to cut to the chase is I'm asking for an exception, okay? And, and here's why. To establish a city road, which is either 40 feet wide without curbs and gutters, or I'm sorry, without sidewalks, but with curbs and gutters, okay? Cost is, is allocated here, and I'll show you these proposals. So these are from Reese Albert, and one of them, the first one here, talks about water and sewer, and that, as you can see, is a sum of $103,000, okay? The next one has to do with the infrastructure as far as the roads. And the road, we've been very compliant and worked very closely with engineering as it relates to following some very specific guidelines in order to have this approved, right? Now, here's the part where the rubber meets the road. I need the city's help. I need city's help because what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in, <clears throat> in this case, for the point of discussion, 11 single-family homes ranging from 1,300 square feet to 2,500 square feet, okay, into an area that right now has no, no infrastructure, right? So there is no sewer available. It's a substantial job, right? I personally have already invested over $250,000 into this project. Now, look at this in a different light. If I were a nonprofit or someone else coming before you today, which would make sense in terms of this type of operation, I am not that person, right? I am a good partner for council and for the city of San Angelo. The reason why is because within the next 12 months, I will have established 11 new, I say new, right? single family homes that will be stucco and exterior, be very aesthetically appealing, have a gated community, and we're talking about land that has been sitting vacant for more than 50 years, right? When I purchased my land originally from the Catholic Diocese, the last time there had been an actual survey on it was 1901. Okay, it's filled with abandoned streets. It's filled with something that is a beautiful area that's failed to prosper because of the fact that, I have to tell you, and I sound like a broken record because I've said it many times, but it's not, um, it's not an extremely safe area, right? Just to give you an example, if I were dramatic, I would show you some of the gun clips and things that I've run over with my lawnmower. It's not a good area, right? But just my presence in the area and having in the last 11 months already fenced over five acres in its entirety. It's nearly 10 acres in the middle of the city, 10 acres, one minute from Miss Hattie's, one minute from downtown, right? 30 seconds from here. 
Help me develop this area. Help me by helping me with funding. All I am is a private citizen. I'm just a girl. You can see I have no one here. <laughs> I have no wingman, right? But I've invested a tremendous amount of my personal money and my father's money, who's my partner in this project, Charles Knoll, because it's a vision. And I proved that would work. We've already broken ground on House One. It, it's really coming together, right? But what I'm asking is that for this, this amount, if you are able to help me with this, we are able to generate a very quick, immediate tax base and income in terms of water, you know, utilities. It's gonna, just gonna generate revenue for the city. And for lack of a better way to express it, it's just gonna help clean up the neighborhood and move San Angelo that direction. I mean, it's, I intend to, and you guys, I don't know if you recall it or not, but I'm putting in a community garden. I mean, it's, it's a big deal and it's well received by the people. <laughs> when I started this project 15 months ago, I had friends and colleagues and people that I'd never met in my life say, <laughs> you don't wanna, no, you don't wanna live over there. No, you're, that's not you, right? You're not gonna be safe. And I said, it's not gonna be safe if we don't make it safe, right? Somebody has to move the needle. Somebody has to set, step up and have enough vision. And frankly, just to give you a little light on everything, when COVID took place or when COVID came upon us, I'll say, you know, I'm 51 years old and I thought, you know what? I'm gonna do something. I'm not gonna be the person that at my funeral, they say, well, she traveled to Brazil. <laughs> you know, she, she traveled to Costa Rica. None of that matters. What did I do to help someone else, right? Because this is not about me. This is about San Angelo, the city that I love, and it's a win-win for the city. And let me just tell you what the proof in the pudding is. This part of the subsidy, the part that, that you help with the, the utility installation and infrastructure, last year, guess how many people took advantage of it? That would be a zero. No one. I'm told that the funds did not roll over, okay? So I don't want that to be the case. I can, I can help move this forward in a way that the infill program was designed to work, right? So I'm not asking you to give me anything. I'm asking you to please partner with me, 50-50, just on this aspect. That's my story. <laughs> Do I have questions? I had a question for John. Don't run off, Alyssa. I think we'll we'll have a few questions for you too. Yes, sir. John, we approved a five thousand dollars for, I believe, eight units some time ago. That was in the last fiscal year. Is that my understanding? Yes. Okay. So, is Tom Thompson related? We're in new fiscal year, uh, and we've got a maximum of two hundred thousand dollars. Of which this request is 136,400. Um, so, Alyssa. Well, we only have 185,000 because there's 15,000 already spent. And did you is are, did you receive that 15,000? Yeah, so, of the 15, five is already spent on this project. So, you really only have 185,000 left. Uh, that's why I asked if yeah. it was in the last fiscal year. No, this is this year. Okay. So we've already made that approval in this fiscal year for the for the addition the, for the original amount. Yes. Okay. Very good. So that answers one of those questions. Okay. Do I have questions from council? Just a, a comment, Mayor. Uh, to me, this is something, when we, when we uh, struggled to, to figure out something and we ultimately came up with the program, to me, this is a valid use of those funds. To me, this is uh, the city participating in economic development. I like the project. I would even throw out there for the council, if we do this, that we then talk about where we can get some more money to replenish those funds to maybe help someone else with a project similar to this. I, I like the project. I do. Do I have other questions or comments? Let me make one little more comment. Uh, yes. And Tom, if you'll go okay. back a few screens. Yes, 
<coughs> you were asking for, you said that there was a, you've got 11 houses that you're, you're proposing? Yes, sir, that is correct. Um, and I just wanted to piggy <coughs> piggyback on what Mr. Hebert had said. I am told by Bob Salas that if, if you d guys do decide to approve my, my consideration, that he's quite confident that, they, that he will be able to allocate more funds because what they're wanting to see is not, and I guess they being you, I'm not sure, but what, what the city's wanting to see is that people are taking advantage of the program. Right, so you're a hundred hundred percent right, um, Mr. Thompson and Mr. Mr. Thomas. There were allocations in 2020 between October and October of 2020, right, for single family homes. So people did take advantage of that, but no developer came forward and said, "Look, I want to do a whole bunch of them. You want to kill a bunch of birds with one stone, um, or do you want to, you know, assume that?" Well, I think part of that, just to be clear, is because in many of the infill areas, it's one lot at a time. It's yes. not a big acreage because infill generally is sort of a one lot at a time program. You might have right. two lots on a block, but you don't have a whole block available. Yes, ma'am. Unlike what you're talking about. So it's not really comparing apples to apples because developers took advantage of it because they're trying to find lots one at a time. And so it's not really a good comparison, but it, it but the in, idea behind the infill was to develop areas that in the past have not been developed and to help support some of the um, infrastructure costs. Yes, Mayor. I understand completely. And I'm not sure Bob Solis, I mean, does he commit to more funds? Well, I know that um, on our end, and, and, I'll, and I'll address that too, Mayor, because Tommy just barely brought it up. Mike, go ahead. You're going to say something? Um, I know that the $200,000 $200, that we had talked about, uh, and we do know that there's two different ways to get that, right? Um, the only issue that, that we have at this point is is a cap that we never talked about. Should we have a cap to make sure that we have those monies available? <clears throat> now, Tommy mentioned maybe other funds may be available. Um, sure, absolutely. If we have a carryover from a previous year where we had additional revenues that came in, we could say, city council could say we could dedicate that toward similar type of deals, but we don't have that yet. So at this point, with the, the direction that we need as a staff is we have these two categories that uh, an individual can qualify for, but is, should there be a cap if we are going to stick to the $200,000? And that's what we need to figure out at this point because we want to make sure that it's not just for this neighborhood, but it's other neighborhoods that yes. uh, need neighborhood revitalization. Yes. And we want to make sure that there's, those monies are available for those neighborhoods as well. So again, for city council, I think the, the uh, direction that absolutely that we need is what do we need to do about capping and making sure that we do have enough money for the remainder of the year? Yeah, my concern <laughs> is because I think the project is a great project and I'm excited to see the interest and the enthusiasm for it. My concern is it's over 50% of the money and it's 11 houses. Yes. And so um, it really leaves uh, limited funds left for other projects and there are many other neighborhoods for development that be, that being said does not change my mind that it's a great project and it certainly will have some very positive effects on the neighborhood and the city of san angelo so i have uh, enthusiasm for that i just am not sure for 11 houses we want to use 50 percent of the money and that's my concern not my concern at any other level, because I think it's a great project, an interesting project, but it's we're in the first month of a new year, and I would hate for us to spend 50% of the money in the first month of a new year, and that would be my only concern. It is not about my concern about how great that project is and the positive impact. It's just we don't know that there's other funds, and so to commit that much right now concerns me. Tom? So just to weigh in on this one, and we'll have to ask John and Bob on this. So if it's 11 lots, Miss Denny here, you could actually apply for 55000 So that's going to leave us a little bit of about an $81,000 hole. So we understand what we need to go forward with it. But if my question is if she can actually apply for this twice. Brenda, going back to what you said, we don't want to get rid of the whole fund. And I think COVID had a lot to do with who applied for funds last year and who didn't. Okay, so I think... As far as building houses, some of that might have been slow or not. But what I would look at, maybe if we could go at 
looking at something around the 55 range, what you would regularly apply for. And then if we get to the end of the year and we still have funds available that weren't used, be able to award her the balance of 81,000 if it's still available at the end of the year. But I don't think it's fair to rob something from somebody else that may want to do some development in single places. I think that's I, a great comment. I don't know if that's something discussing uh, we could do, but I'll throw that one to Daniel. Tom? Uh, Daniel? Not me. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> he, he just wishes he was me. Yeah. <laughs> we all do. We all do. With my hair. Um, Daniel, I, I was looking at our blue book, and it looks to me like we have a, a really healthy fund balance. So my question is, what uh, what's the best practice when we're looking at, uh, there's X number of days, is it, is, it, is, it, is it 60, is it 70? What's the best practice when we're, because uh, well, right I've, right. I've got a suggestion sure, here. Sure, right now we, we go by 75, but uh, really the, the better practice would be 90 days in fund balance is what we'd prefer to have. Uh, so when we start looking at 90 days in fund balance, we know that we have a really healthy fund balance at that point. So maybe earlier what I commented about, uh, we had, of course, revenues with sales tax revenues that did kind of uh, did carry over. Uh, we want to make sure we maintain a healthy fund balance, and that's why I say that if city council in the future wants to dedicate, and of course we have a lot of needs uh, for the city, but if the city council decides that they do want to allocate more monies in the future, specifically for a project like this, if you want to call them economic development, uh, as long as we have a healthy fund balance, you could. The city council could say, could we possibly allocate from there? Well, that, I was going to say, if we have above 90 days fund balance, could we then say earmark, not necessarily appropriate, but earmark anything above a 90-day fund balance and say that could be available funding for a project like this? Uh, I mean, you could. Uh, again, for us on our end, it's a good fiscal responsibility to maintain that, that healthy fund balance. Well, so. and I think what we want to do today is give her direction so she can move forward immediately. And I think we as a council can talk about a lot of ideas creatively, et cetera, down the road. But I don't think today's the day to come up with all of the other options in terms of what we might be able to do. But obviously there's some things out there. I think what we want to do today is say we're willing to commit X amount of dollars today and let her move forward. And then as time goes by, we can take a look at and see what other um, issues might come forward for this. Uh, Harry? This project is in my district and I certainly want to support it in some way. I just am concerned that using 136.4 out of two, out 185,000 is, when we're only 30, day, basically 30 days, 45 days into this, this fiscal year. Uh, so, what Tom Thompson said makes a lot of sense to me. I, 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 can, I can support that. So, Tom, you want to make that? I, that yeah. won't go far. Tom, yeah. then you want to make, oh, wait, Billy? Before sorry. we move, I would just, because I support this project 100%, what you have described to us, Ms. Denny, is certainly a need in a community that um, has a need for, you know, this type of, of housing to certainly um, help people out and to enhance the neighborhood. So my question to you is, if we were to move forward with uh, something like uh, Council Member Thompson has mentioned at the $55,000 level, what impact, what effect would that have on your project? Thank you for asking, Ms. DeWitt. Um, You'll notice on the screen here, I do have a visual. This was my original proposal for the 11 lots to planning and zoning. You'll see that it um, utilizes flag lots rather than utilizing a city road, right? Now, <clears throat> this, is my, this is my, I don't wanna say last request, but I had this poised because I understand that this is a huge ask. You know, I work in corporate America, I get it. Why give that girl that portion of it? And I think part of my argument is, is that that girl bought each of those lots individually, non-platted, they don't have any utilities, and they're not accessible to utilities. That's why this is such a crazy amount of money, right? And then in compliance with everything that the city is requiring in terms of engineering, for example, another fire hydrant be put in, a 40-foot road, I mean, it's, it's a little bit, it's, it's kind of overkill to a certain extent. 
So to answer your question, Mr. Witt, $50,000 will not help me make this project. However, if I can get council to support me on the project in front of you, which right now flag lots are still a viable option, right? As far as planning and zoning is concerned. If we can get your support today, if I can get your support, no money, but if I can get your support on a plan like this, then I believe that $50,000 would enable me to do that project essentially. Um, because the main cost here, in addition to the, the, the water and sewer, is the road. And, and frankly, the road's not even in keeping with my vision of a, that's as wide as Roosevelt <laughs> in the middle of, you know, 10 houses, right? Very short, very, the whole intention of this is to make this place appealing. Make it when you drive across the river, it doesn't go from beautiful park, right? All scenic into blight. You know, I, I have people using the restroom in homemade toilets where I'm building my house, right? This is something that I understand I'm just one person and I don't want to take away from potential of someone else. But you guys have to understand, I've been working on this project all through last year. That's how I know that no one took advantage of this portion of the program. And I was told that the funds would roll potentially, but they didn't. So they didn't help, right? I couldn't move fast enough. Um, it just wasn't that lib. So I appreciate very much, Mr. Hebert, your suggestion. And I can feel the support that you guys are giving me. I don't feel, you know, embarrassed or upset or hurt or anything like that. This project will happen. It may not happen to the tune of 11 additional houses because I may have to put one house there, right? Um, but the problem is I can't sell those lots, right, which are valued on the tax rolls, you know, right around between $6,500 and $8,500. I can't sell those as buildable lots because no one independent person can buy one lot and then afford to, to do the, the sewer. You know what I'm saying? There's no way that they could afford it. That's why it's never been developed, right? So that's my reasoning. But if I have to, I can build, you know, four or five houses total on the 10 acres. I can take advantage of the, the $5,000 infill, which I would, but that would be the most that I could afford to invest as a, just a person, just as a private citizen. I don't have any backing other than the Bank of San Angelo, um, and I'm not a rich woman, but I believe I am a visionary, and I believe that while we do need to develop certainly other areas of the city, I believe that the proximity of my project to city center is invaluable, especially considering the fact that we're doing all the renovations on Chadburn. You may or may not know I work for Fox, KIDY Fox, so I'm very familiar with the area. Um, and I think it's the area that the city needs to go, in my opinion. I mean, it, it, they're all worthy, don't get me wrong. But picking up acorns off the ground, if you can go and pick up a basket versus picking them up individually, you know, with somebody that you know is going to be the caliber. I just want council to know that um, I've also purchased an additional six homes in that area that were not lived in, blighted. You know. Lucy, you had a question? Yes. Uh, Ms. Denny, I just want you to know that I applaud you and I feel like you are doing a great job with this project. Uh, you're taking on a lot and like you said, you're only one person, but that's, sometimes that's all it takes to get something going. Rosa Parks. <laughs> and uh, I want you to know, I am for this for this project. I feel that uh, you got started, you, you're on the roll, you've got your ducks in a row, and uh, to be able to help you would be a great asset to San Angelo because you have got the plan rolled out. For us to keep waiting to see who might want the assistant or who wants to build where, it would us just sitting there waiting when you're ready to go. So as far as I'm concerned, I will, I will vote for the project to continue at $136,000 over $136,000. So before we move Kelly, to would vote, you like, yeah, go ahead. Uh, Mayor, if I could, um, it's back to the question that council member Hebert brought uh, forward about the, um, our fund and how many days. Do we currently know whether or not we have more than 90 days? I'd like to have Tina come up here and, and talk about the, the number of days that we currently do have. 
coming. I have a yes, question. Yes, Lane, go ahead. It says here in item A we have 50% of the costs. So the total cost, is that your total or is that the 50% of the 136? 50%. Sorry. 50% is 136. 50% is 136. Yes, sir. Yep, that's what I'm asking okay. for, 50%. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. We currently have over $17 million um, at the end of September of 2020 um, in our fund balance, and we are just about $100,000 over the 75-day goal, so we are definitely not at 90-day uh, fund balance at the end of 2020 per, you know, what we've budgeted. Um, and again, that's at year-end. We haven't gone through our annual audit, so that, that may change as we go through the audit, but right now I would not recommend using fund balance at this time. Thank you, Tina. Okay, so let me, let me, Tommy. Let me ask a question. We don't have any above 90 days right now. If after audit we did have above 90 days, we're not, we're not talking but roughly seventy-five dollars to $80,000. If we are willing to go ahead and grant the $55,000 as per Tom's suggestion, so we wouldn't need but another, again, seventy-five dollars to $80,000. Would the council be amenable once we get that, if we're above the 90 days by 75 or 80,000 to allocate that amount to come up with 136? That's just a thought too, to help her move the project along. I, I think one of the big issues about making a commitment today to use fund balance is understanding what the big issues are out there that we have to address. I know we've already had some presentations and communication as it relates to College Hills and a lack of ability to find the funding to do College Hills, which we know is a major issue for us. So um, I, I'm just concerned about starting to pick pieces away from the fund balance. I think we get in trouble when we start doing that because then we start looking at other things where there's a lack of funds and we start pulling it down. Um, we've, got, we've got some big issues in this city infrastructure-wise, so I'm a little nervous to do that. I, I understand, Brenda. I do. Yeah. I do. Brenda. Other questions, comments? So we're talking about, Ms. Danny, we're talking about 11 houses, right? Yes, sir. For this for this phase of the project, um, that only um, that only utilizes um, two point. Or I'm sorry, yes, two point five acres of the ten acres. Eleven houses. Correct, sir. Okay. For this portion, yes, sir. So with eleven houses, you could get fifty five anyway. All right. No matter what we do here, you qualify for yes, fifty five. Yes, I do. Yes, you're I looking for the one thirty six. We got a difference of eighty. I mean, we all want this thing to go forward. But we have to treat everybody in the, and this is one of those things where you make both sides mad or make both sides happy. Sure. We have to be fair and consistent with that. Yes, you know, sir. I understand. You know, seeing if you could make the gap and has seen this has not been a, a something that's had a lot of demand pulled from the balance, can you go nine, ten months and then look at your reimbursement on the tail end? You know, if, if the funds were available there to come back and say, okay, we didn't use this balance, you requested it for infrastructure, we get that. So here's your 81,000, all right? And now potentially that could be 50,000 only. Uh, it just depends on what's know, left, right? all right? Because yeah, we got to treat everybody fair. I mean, if there's another Miss Denny that comes up with another project, we can't pick one over the other. We have to be fair whether we even like it or not. I can assure you there's not another Miss Denny. Right, so yeah. Um, you know, th that's something to look at here, but I, right, I'm with Brenda. Kidding. I think it's hard to make a call on this today. Okay. We know you got the 55. But I think there's some very sharp people around here with staff that could maybe look at doing this thing. Yes, I don't think anybody here wants to slow you down. No, I, I don't feel that at all, and I I don't want to I don't want to take the lion's share from anyone else. Believe me, I am a devout humanitarian. I wouldn't even be doing this if I weren't. Okay. So what I would ask, um, what about um, Mr. Thomas, if if I'm earmarked for the, if I'm earmarked for 55,000, right? So say you earmark me, you don't give it to me, but you, I'm earmarked. And then as you set a time frame and you do further diligence and, you know, consideration and whatever, um, if we could then, you know, allocate the amount needed to do the project, 
then I could move forward. I can't move forward with this particular plan, the one with the city street, okay, without your assistance, right? So when, when you guys think of it that you're giving me 50%, you're giving me 50% of this tiny piece of it, right? I've already have a tremendous investment into this. So <clears throat> one thought would be we could look at two alternatives. One, like I said, I would ask for your support on this flag lock consideration. I mean, maybe this is the way to go. And maybe this is something that we could all work together with the funding. And maybe the outcome would be very similar, right? It doesn't matter to me either way. I just want to take, you know, in, in total, 16 homes that are going to be torn down and taken to the landfill, right, over to this area. And um, frankly, Baptist Memorial is willing to work with me like over the next year. They, they really believe in me and they're fully vested. So they're willing to wait as I can move forward. So I guess in answer to your question, will I wait for you? Absolutely. Do I think that someone else is going to come in and take this money? No, I don't. Um, but I don't know. I'm not a fortune teller. So could I ask for in lieu of being able to make that decision today, which I fully respect, Mrs. Mayor. I understand, and I appreciate those have ex that have ex expressed support because I feel like I'm supported by everybody in here today. Um, how does council feel about potentially uh, recommending this plan, the plan that you see in front of you? Mayor. We c yes, um, please. She already has an, a plan that's approved that is not this plan. If she wants us to consider this plan, she can go back through the process and get this plan approved at the Planning Commission and bring it before you and at that point in time decide on the funding. But it's not something that's on the agenda today to be decided. It hasn't gone through the proper process. She has something else approved. Um, and so it's just not possible to make that deal with her today. So the reason, thank you, Ms. James. The reason that I brought this today was, in fact, planning is the one that put this into the PowerPoint for me. So planning is aware, and I have met with planning regarding this already. Was it approved? No, because what they wanted was me to play ball with engineering, right, and do the other plan, which is considerably more expensive, right? So my ask is that if we can't do the one, if I wait and we can't do the one, you know, will council support me not, I mean, I, I understand that I have to comply with planning and zoning, but believe me, I've studied this with SKG Engineering and Russell Gully to the nth degree. So I know what, you know, what's possible and what isn't. Um, and at this point, flag lots are still allowable. And I realize it's not on the agenda and I respectfully, sorry, just had to interject there because this was specifically pointed out by Aaron Vinoy that, you know, I should address this in the event that y'all didn't, you know, feel that, giving me the lion's share was fair. Can I ask, um, on the homes that coming from Baptist Memorial, were, were those given to you? Did you have to buy those homes, or were they free? They just were. Just for the cost of moving them? Yes, just for the cost of moving them, which Baptist Memorial had estimates for $35,000 per home um, to have those demolished and taken away, as you can imagine, because they're on slabs. So it's, it's a big endeavor. Me personally, what does it cost me just to move it? Just one home, $40,000, just to move it. And then I have to recreate foundation. I have to make driveways. I have to make, you know, garages. When you move a house, garages can't be made into a garage. So you have to make that interior space and then add a garage. I mean, the cost, it just becomes exorbitant. And when you look at the, the proposal before you with the, the city street, at that cost that the city is requiring and that I'm willing to comply with, I have $35,000 invested before I ever start the project of moving the houses into each lot. $35,000, right? That, yeah, I think that that would be normal of, of a plat for any developer if they had a big piece of land. I, I don't know all the rules and regs, but maybe you can. Mayor, if, if we could, um, we, we definitely want to do everything we can to assist and work with our developers, and we appreciate your investment in the community. Sure. Uh, what I propose is to allow me, allow Rick, uh, to work with the planning department to take a look at this option with flag law configuration and see what we can do kind of to kind of move that forward. I would appreciate uh, that. Sure. We'd, uh, we could look at all the details and make sure that on our end, anything that we may have concern can be satisfied. We want to make sure that we can work with you as well. So if you give it. us that opportunity to do that, we, we would prefer to do that, though, and, and kind of work through this. That would be I great. I think the other part is, and Lane might be willing to, uh, or might be ready to say this anyway, 
I'm looking at his face. I'm not sure what he's going to say. But, <laughs> Let's see. Uh, but, I, but I think, you know, one of the programs with this infill is the fact that part of the infill program was to help for infrastructure. Net effect is, is most in other areas, they're building a home from ground up. So the expense of building a foundation, doing the garage, doing whatever is a huge expense. So even though yours is an infrastructure uh, cost factor investment, Infill development is also about building houses from ground up. So you would have a reduced cost as it relates to building the home from ground up relative to perhaps some other areas. And oh, so mm -hmm. you have savings in that area compared to infill right. development in other areas. So I think that also has to be taken into consideration. Lane, I think you wanted to make comments. Which brings me to my question of, do you have an anticipated appraised value of each home for an economic impact for tax base? Yes, sir. The, um, I have actually, the Bank of San Angelo obviously required me to get appraisals and what have you. So I have one on file right now for 160000 and I have another one pending. Um, and Mayor, if I could respond to, I'm sorry, did you have another question? Well, I, uh, one more comment. Yes, I of course. definitely like your analogy of you're picking up acorns, you wanted to pick up one or two or pick up the whole basket, um, which when we started this program, we all knew, and I, I had in mind uh, when we were talking about it, that you know there's definitely some people out there that if they came and had enough to equal 200,000, they'd buy up all the lots and they'd be financially able to do so and could take the entire thing all at once, the whole basket all at once. So we've, we've got to be due diligent on how we do split it up. So I'm, I'm with you, Tom. Um, I'm, I'm definitely game if we want to look at later on. I don't like money in the pot. That's not going to be rolled over. If we can use it, fine. Uh, if, if we allocate some money to her today and then come back if there's money to to keep going then great so that appraised value is my my biggest question um yes, on sir. and i would what say the that payback would be it's highly conservative based on the fact that you know they're taking a risk just like you all are moving houses is not something that happens every day in fact it's it's a miracle if you actually watch it. Um, and just to speak, frankly, uh, Ms. Mayor, to your comment. So as it relates to the economy of San Angelo, um, in my employee are uh, concrete layers, asphalt layers, stucco, roofers, drywallers, granite, flooring, plumbers. I have to install complete plumbing um, and HVAC in every house. So is it feeding the people and the, the, the workers in San Angelo that are skilled trades? Absolutely. Frankly, I may be standing up here before you in a month saying, you know what, forget it. <laughs> I did one and, you know, it cost me so much, it's not worth 160000 And the lots in that area, I've had four different developers, all of which council would know their name, come out there and look at it with me and say, no. You know, it's going to be too hard to sell a house in this area, and this is way too much for, per lot. You know, I can buy a lot like this for $8,500, you know, but... They, those lots have utilities already. So I get it. It seems like a moot point. But, you know, changing the world one starfish at a time, yes, it matters to the starfish, but if I can go get a whole bunch of them at one time with the big net, then I've increased my impact. I'm not just Rosa Parks. You know, there was a, a quote in church yesterday, and it said, it was from Martin Luther King. It said, faith is taking the first step even though you can't see the rest of the stairway. So do I have the stairway to show you? No. Do I have, you know, your support in your hearts? I think so. Yeah, I do. So, um, Mr. Valenzuela, if you would be willing to meet with me with council, or be sorry, with planning to, at some be time, happy to do that. we can look at that. One way or another, I'm going to take advantage to the, the most of my ability of this program. I have plans for 24 homes on the 10 acres and allowing a common area to be enjoyed as it is right now by the deer and wildlife and the fox that I saw out there this morning and also the people. Because I don't want to keep the people out. I want the people to be there. But I want to attract the right caliber of people that it's going to be a safe place for, for kids, right? Thank you for your consideration. I have one more comment, please. Yes, go ahead. Um, 
I just wanted to say this. We're up here always saying that we need homes, that we need homes, we need builders. We, you know, the people need places to, to live in. And I believe that you bring this to us, and then all of a sudden, we don't have what you need. And I'm sorry that that is the problem right now. I hope that you do get together with whoever you need to, with the city staff, and get this project going, because I think it's very beneficial for the people of San Angelo. And I also believe that when we say that we need something and somebody's offering it to us, we should, we should look at it more carefully. Thank you. All right, with that, Tom, did you want to make a motion? How would we somebody? phrase this? Yeah. Just to table it? Well, I think, you know, we need to have her work with Daniel and Rick, and they need to look at different options as far as using this plan. So I'll make a motion of that if that makes sense. Julia, does that work? Yeah, that works. Cool. All right, so we're going to table this item, do further research and, and informational okay. digs, and come back with back. some ideas. Awesome. Okay. Yes, ma'am, we can do that. I need a second on that. Okay. <laughs> do we need a motion on that? Yes, we need a motion on that. So, Tom, you made a motion. Harry second. And Harry seconded. All right, any public comment? With no public comment, we'll take a vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 With none opposed, motion passes 7-0. So you all will move forward and talk and yes, see what you can resolve. Thank you all very much for listening to my long-winded explanation. Thank you. Okay, we'll move on to item B, first reading and public hearing of an ordinance amending Article 12.04, quote, signs in Chapter 12 of the City Code of Ordinances by amending Section 1204.005, on-site regulations and deleting section 12.04.006, quote, off-site reg regulations in its entirety, and to consider a resolution to temporarily suspend issue of sign permits affected by this ordinance amendment pending the adoption of the ordinance. And John, you are on. Thank you. Uh, as noted in your packet, there was a recent decision in the Fifth Circuit of the federal court system um, that basically made uh, much of our ordinance unenforceable, our sign ordinance, uh, as m most every other city uh, in, in Texas. Um, and the key distinction there is almost every city distinguishes between on-premise signs and off-premise signs. So, you know, a business sign for a McDonald's on McDonald's site is an on-site or on-premise sign. A billboard that just advertises anything, that's an off-premise sign because it's not advertising a business or product on that particular site. So that's been the way signs have been regulated uh, around the country uh, and for sure in Texas for, for decades. Uh, and so this court decision basically said you can't make that distinction. Uh, it's, well, I want to get into the details of why. Uh, but basically, that means that our ordinance distinction between on-premise and off-premise signs, we can't do anymore. So we want to take a look at our ordinance, but because of this um, decision, uh, our concern is that our current ordinance is unenforceable as it's written. So this is kind of a quick fix uh, to make a change uh, while we go back and look at the ordinance to see what bigger changes we might need to look at. Um, you want to go back and once again explain the difference when you say on-site business signs and off-site billboard signs, just to be clear. Yeah, again, an on-site sign is a sign advertising the business that's on that property, which are most of the signs we see around town. Um, an off-site sign is a, a sign that doesn't advertise what's on that property. And so typically it's what we think of as the billboard. So along the highway where you have a billboard that, you know, advertises, you know, a realtor or, uh, you know, whatever, you know, stop at our business that's a mile down the road. Um, and so that's really the distinction. And the reason it's a distinction is if, if I'm opening a business and I'm putting a sign on my site, I'm limited to a certain number of signs and a certain size of signs. What our ordinance does, it says if you're an off-site sign, a billboard, you can have a larger sign than is normally allowed. And so the concern here is if, without being able to make this distinction, um, you know, a sign company or a business could argue, 
well, they should be able to get the largest size sign our ordinance allows. And I don't think we want the 700 square foot billboard signs to be able to go anywhere in town. And so what this quick fix does- well, You don't want a billboard sign to become the on-site premise size of sign? Meaning if I'm a billboard person, I can have X. If I'm a business, I can have a smaller Y. And so what we're not wanting is the smaller Y to have the opportunity to be the big X. That's right. And again, we want to take a bigger look at our ordinance and bring back to you some considerations of different ways we could handle that. What this quick fix does is just basically keep everything the same as it is today. It just takes out that distinction between on-premise or off-site and on-site. Uh, but other than that, the size of sign you can have, how many signs you can have, all of that pretty much stays the same, but without this problematic distinction that the court threw out. Uh, may, uh, yes, Billy. Um, but if our current ordinance is unenforceable, I don't understand what this would do. Would you, what would this do if we can't enforce what we have? Well, it changes enough wording in the ordinance to make it enforceable again. It removes that distinction between on-site and off-site. It completely eliminates the off-site section of the ordinance and makes all the signs meet the on-site sign section. But it adds back in a provision that the bigger signs that are now allowed are still allowed in the locations where those were allowed before. But if you wanted to put in a new billboard, what would be the issue? If tomorrow I said I'm coming to you and I want to put in a new billboard, what would the, rule, what would the answer be? Well, under this change, if you can do it today, you can still do it tomorrow under this ordinance. But I still don't understand when you said the court ruling eliminated the distinction between on-site versus off-site. So right. if it eliminated that, and we're following the federal court's decision, what, where would we be, I'm, what am I missing? I the court actually said, and my office has actually said this for a long time, that there was prior court cases at the Supreme Court level that reduced a lot of the restrictions on signs to what the content was. So basically that court, the Supreme Court said, if you have to read the sign to determine what rules apply, that is not a permissible way to manage signs. But the Supreme Court left open this distinction between on-site and off-site. So Is this the Texas Supreme Court? No, it was the U.S. Supreme okay. Court. And so um, at the time that decision came down, it just seemed intrinsically weird to, my, to me and to the attorneys in my office that, but they're still allowing on-site and off-site, but I have to read the sign to see if it matches the business on that location or not. Um, the Fifth Circuit kind of closed that by saying, even on-site and off-site, you have to read the content. So it's, an it's not impermissible, but there's strict scrutiny applied to it, which we would never pass on a sign ordinance. So it said if you have to read the content on the sign, then that's not what's permissible. So that essentially, throughout the Fifth Circuit, removed the city's abilities to distinguish between what kind of sign I have on my place of business and what kind of sign I can put on a billboard. So when we were looking at um, changing our ordinances, and what we were going to do, we first thought we'll just put a moratorium on all signs until we fix it. And that wasn't the right answer because new businesses coming in then would not be allowed to have a sign. Then we looked at it and said, well, let's just apply on-site regulations to all signs. Well, that would limit all signs, no matter the location, to a very restrictive set of criteria, including no bigger than 250 feet. So that would effectively remove any ability for billboards to be in place or come into the city. Um, and so when we spend some time actually looking at the provisions we have, removing the on-site and off-site words um, no longer makes these apply. You don't have to read it to apply these rules. It's really more location-based now. So in residential districts, um, subdivision development signs, and commercial districts, there's a set of rules that applies. And then we say, well, in, ex in addition to those, there's also these billboard rules, which were off-site sign rules before. We're going to keep those because those were all location-specific rules anyway. So you can only have 250 square feet signs, except in these areas, which is essentially where we allowed billboards before. So it was actually a pretty 
easy temporary fix. Mm -hmm. It might have consequences down the road. It is probably, if there's any consequence, we anticipate it might open a few more areas up for billboards, but it's certainly not, it doesn't look like it's gonna restrict anybody's ability to have a sign. And it <laughs> removes the, the um, impermissible determination that we have to actually read the sign to see what rules apply. Now we don't have to read the sign, we only have to look at the location, which is still permissible. So what if McDonald's wants to put a billboard in addition to their sign, you know, the only places right now. that billboards are allowed are the places they have been allowed, so they would not be allowed to do that. Okay. Now, if McDonald's okay. wanted to give up their McDonald's sign on site and replace it with a Burger King sign, we can't stop them from doing that. But what if you had a, if I own McDonald's and I had a big sign that the Golden Arch is McDonald's, okay, mm -hmm. which is the branding. Mm -hmm. But then I wanted a billboard on my location that was a flashing billboard that said, two ninety nine dollars hamburgers today. Right. Today only. And then at 6 o'clock tonight, it says free sodas. Would that be allowed? No, it wouldn't, because the same rules, basically, as far as location, is still, is still in place. The Tom, only place that any sign over 250 square feet would be allowed is the places where we currently allow billboards today. So, Tommy, you had a question? Or Tommy, no, somebody not, said something. Tom no. was doing his stand-up comedy rules. Really. <laughs> I was saying, I, I know for 2 99 and free sodas, I'd be in. Pretty hard with these masks on. Sorry. So we're still limiting signs on, on most places by size. We're not limiting them by message. So again, if McDonald's wants to take down their golden arches and put up an advertisement for somebody else, they can do that, and we won't be able, under these rules, to prohibit that, whereas before we could have. I just want to be very clear. That was made up about the free soda, so nobody <laughs> listening to this oh, should assume no. Oh, no. that I'm was going. not a commitment, that was not an advertisement, that was just a, an example, so no one take that and run with it, okay? That means Hattie. That means Hattie. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. We're coming to his Hattie. Exactly. Mayor Gunner sorry. says McDonald's yeah. is giving away. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Eric Wilson didn't mean to get you in trouble on this deal, sorry. So I think the other important thing that this ordinance does is it puts this ordinance in effect only until December 31st of 2021. So it puts pressure on the city to go and look at our sign ordinance and fix it. And um, at that point in time, you'll either have to extend that rule or this ordinance, or it will completely go away and we won't have any sign requirements basically. Um, so we tried as much as we can to remain status quo as far as locations, size, and all of those sorts of things without actually having to read the sign to see what it says in those locations. The sign ordinance is always a very emotional, controversial, heated conversation, and it has historically been that in this city. So I would strongly recommend that the only thing we do today is to make sure we don't change anything um, in the sign ordinance, if we have to adjust to a Supreme Court ruling, the question mark is that San Angelo is adjusting to it or every city in the state of Texas is adjusting to it, and what timelines are we putting on ourselves that are not required? It's every city who has any kind of on-site or off-site designation. Both my International Municipal Lawyers Association as well as Texas City Attorneys Association sent out information about this ruling saying this basically invalidates any provisions you have for on-site or off-site designations and recommended that we pass ordinances that are location-based, size-based, you know, flashing light kind of parameters, but on-site, off-site is no longer permissible. And I'm, I'm sure there's going to be an appeal, and so the Supreme Court might come in and say, uh, nope, on-site, off-site still is allowed, and that would just mean we can put our ordinance back like it was if we want to, but for now, what we have is not permissible within the Fifth Circuit. So if there's going to be an appeal, why would we react now to changing the language if we think there's going to be an appeal and we have to come back and change it up again? Do we not want to wait until there's a final verdict? Waiting ruling? means we have no sign ordinance, and billboards can go anywhere they want, and signs can say whatever they want, and they can have how many ever they want. So to maintain the status quo, we have to make a change. Are there further questions from council on this issue as if it, we had a vote? It <laughs> sounds like to me we only have a vote on this. Amanda, we approve as presented. Okay. Is there a second on that? Second. I think there were four seconds on that, so we'll take every one of them. Any public comment? 
With no public comment, uh, we'll take a vote. All in favor of our hands being forced on this, say aye. 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 Okay, passes 7 0. Okay, item C. I guess we discussed um, one and two, so the vote was on one and two, just to be clear. Yeah, you read both of them, okay, which means just to be that clear. until you read this on second reading, we won't approve any sign permits. Yeah. So anyway, that- Say that one more time, one, Teresa. Until next council meeting, when this is on second reading and is approved, we won't be approving any sign permits okay, in the meantime. thank you. I just wanted that, that clear for the, for the viewing public. Thank you. With that being said, are there any uh, in the works in our offices right now that need approved? Because if they're sitting there right now, or is the desk clean of all those permit requests at this moment? I think if, if they had already submitted their request, we would have to continue to process them. Once That's what I want to make sure. Once their foot's in the door, we have to complete the process. Okay. We so actually had a sign appeal that was supposed to come before you, then this decision was issued, and we were like, well, it's moot now, so enjoy your sign. So. Okay, so anything that's in the works now, if it fits within the regs, moves forward. Okay, with that, item C, first reading and public hearing of an ordinance approving case Z20-13, a rezoning from the light manufacturing zoning, zoning district to the general commercial zoning district being 2.97 acres located at 1801 and 1819 Knickerbocker Road and adjacent vacant lots located on Industrial Avenue between Market Street and Commerce Street. And John, you're on. Thank you. Again, John James, Director of Planning and Development Services. Uh, this is a rezoning. This is another one on Knickerbocker. Uh, as you may recall, a lot of Knickerbocker Road was zoned for lot manufacturing. I guess the thought was adjacent to the railroad. Um, you know, 50 years ago, they thought this might become an industrial corridor. Obviously, it has not. And so we've continued to see more properties rezoned from the manufacturing to uh, a commercial zoning. This is just another one of those. Um, this is the Corona's uh, a business and then a restaurant next door to it, as well as a couple of vacant properties behind it, uh, all asking to go from lot manufacturing uh, to the general commercial. Um, as is you that property that you're showing all owned by one person or multiple persons? I, I'm not sure if it's all under one ownership. It is all one request. So uh, the, the requesters are all, if it's multiple owners, they're all requesting okay, the, the same Okay, just to be action. clear. Um, and so, again, you can see there's some additional lot manufacturing in the area, um, but uh, the future long-range plan that's adopted for this area is all for commercial. Uh, just a few pictures. You can see the Coronas and then the restaurant back behind it. of the vacant properties uh, behind that. Let me clarify that. I noticed on there that we, that we are actually initiating the request for uh, one of those properties to clean up the zoning for that area. Um, and as you can see, there was no opposition on that from those property owners. Um, again, this is cleaning up, moving from manufacturing to commercial zoning for a business that's already non-conforming. So if, if their business burned down, they wouldn't be able to reconstruct it uh, without this change. And so this just assists them, uh, but it cleans it up for the whole block. So when we say zero in opposition, we're sure we had certified mail sent to the public, to the people who own those properties to ensure that they know what's going on as it relates to a change in zoning? Yes, absolutely. So we did use certified mail? Um, Certified? No, it's just regular mail. But I believe we spoke to those uh, property owners of that particular uh, business. Make sure they can address that. What business is it, John? Well, Corona's is the business that oh, yeah. is. So the application. Sorry, the application was actually made by the Corona Building and the people that own that. Um, so Ms. Bunyard was actually the applicant along with Mr. Ridgeway. The number six, which is Bonsai Gardens today, it's a restaurant currently. As soon as they submitted their application, I sent in the U.S. Postal Mail a letter to the owner specifically explaining to them the rezoning. They are based out of, I believe, Illinois, so it was a little bit longer. I wanted to make sure I got it out as soon as possible. In addition to that, we sent out the 200-foot notices, which they also were sent. So they've had two letters sent to them 
one as soon as we could, and then one within the 200 foot requirement notice. So they've had two letters and I have not heard or spoken to them at all. So we don't have a telephone contact number? No, ma'am. They, again, they're out of state. Why well, no, but they would still have a telephone. The, the business might. We don't have the property owner's telephone number. That is correct. Thank you. Lucy, you want to go ahead and ask your question? I just wanted to ask, do you know what's going to be built there or what's? No, we, they have not uh, indicated to us what the future plans are for that. Uh, obviously, so some, zoning, some type of commercial that. Yeah. With this zoning change, what could be built there? Basically, any type of retail, commercial, uh, sales, um, anything you think of as commercial. Uh, and again, with the manufacturing zoning, uh, a lot of that retail type use would not be allowed. And so this, this allows the kinds of uses you see up and down Knickerbocker uh, that they could not recreate with that manufacturing zoning. Um, okay, continue. Staff does recommend approval, uh, and the Planning Commission unanimously recommended approval at their October meeting. And with that, I'd be happy to answer any other questions. Are there further questions for John on this item? With none, may I have a motion for approval, Lane? A second? Okay. Second by Tommy. Any public comment on this item? With no public comment, we'll take a vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Motion passes 7-0. We'll move on to item D. First reading and public hearing of an ordinance approving case Z20-16, a request for a rezoning from low-rise multifamily residence, neighborhood commercial, and light manufacturing to the Central Business District zoning district being 6.487 acres, located at 122 West 2nd Street, 209 and 215 Gill Street, 34 West 3rd Street, 214 and 218 Far Street, and other unaddressed properties in the 100 and 200 blocks of West 2nd Street and West 3rd Street. So, John? Thank you. Again, John James, Director of Planning and Development Services. This, and you can see on the map here, is it's a lot of different properties. These are all currently owned by the Salvation Army. Uh, they are looking to divest themselves of uh, a number uh, of, of these properties. And so uh, given the various different zonings uh, in the area, including manufacturing, uh, apartment zoning, uh, as well as uh, commercial zoning, um, they thought given the proximity to the central business district uh, that rezoning it to central business district would uh, be the best marketing tool for them to help uh, sell these properties. Again, here's the, uh, th this is in our long range plan as downtown. Uh, so it's an area that has been planned for future expansion of downtown type uh, businesses. So the Central Business District uh, does make a lot of sense here. In fact, the Planning Commission has recently looked at uh, a much larger area here to rezone to Central Business District, uh, and that may be coming to you all soon, but uh, this is just the request from the Salvation Army that you're looking at today. Here's just a few pictures of some of their various different uh, business or facilities on those properties. There are three homes, and let me go back to the map real quick just so I can, whoop. so you can see right in here, it, it leaves out three properties that are zoned for uh, homes uh, because those are not owned by the Salvation Army, and so those will remain uh, as they currently are. We did send out those notices to all of the surrounding property owners. Uh, we did get one in favor and one in opposition. What was the opposition? You know, I, I remember talking about this with Hillary, but I'll let her answer that one. Their main opposition was having new stuff built around them. They were worried it's a home, so it's a single family home, so their concern was the future development of these properties. Um, we do have the applicant here today, or Steve Eustace is representing the applicant, and I don't know if there's any plans to build anything new. They're just trying to utilize the properties to the best of their ability. And the one in favor? I believe that's, we had recently gotten a rezoning request from that same area, and that looks to be the same property that recently rezoned uh, similarly in the area. Okay. Uh, as I mentioned, the proposed zoning is in keeping with the comprehensive plan designation for downtown. Uh, CBD is the logical designation for these properties. It's, a, it's immediately adjacent to uh, what we think of as downtown and would be a prime expansion area for downtown top development. And it is a unique opportunity in the downtown because it's such a large contiguous 
uh, grouping of properties that somebody could take that and uh, p someone could buy individual properties and do things, or somebody could take the whole thing and do something, uh, a bigger type development. Uh, but the CBD gives them the most, uh, that zoning gives them the most flexibility in terms of the various uses allowed. Uh, staff does recommend approval, and the Planning Commission also recommended approval unanimously. Uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Harry, you want to start with any questions or comments? Move to approve as presented. Well, let me just find out if anybody else has any questions first. Okay, does anybody else have okay. any questions? Lucy? Uh, yes. How many, on those three homes that you have, do you have residents in each home, or is one vacant and two? I believe they're all occupied, but I'm not 100% sure about that. They're all occupied. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions or comments from council? I'll second Harry's motion. Okay, thank you, Tony. With that, is there any public comment? With none, we'll take a vote. All in favor, say aye. Aye. It passes 7-0. With item D having um, been uh, discussed and, and approved, we will move into the closed session. Executive session on the provision of government code title five, open government ethics, subtitle A, open government, chapter 551, open meetings, subchapter D, exceptions to requirement that meetings be open under the following sections. A, 551.071, consultation with attorney regarding wastewater treatment plant, TCEQ permit, WQ00106410003. Item B, 551.087, Business Prospect Economic Development regarding San Angelo Regional Airport, Mathis Field. And item C, 551.074, Personal Matters regarding the Annual Evaluation of the City Manager. With that, uh, we will move into closed session. And um, let's do it. Order. Um, item A on the agenda is follow-up and administrative issues. Uh, we have called this meeting back to order at 1056. Um, item A is consider items discussed in closed session if needed and there are no issues to discuss. And item B is consideration of approving various board nominations, Airport Advisory Board, Bruce Partain, SMD1, to a first term and Teresa Special, SMD2, to a second term, both ending October 2022. Do I have a motion for those approvals? Move. So moved by Tommy, seconded by Billy. Any public comment? With no public comment, we'll take a vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Did you second it, Billy? It was me. Oh, oh, good. I'm, I'm going to correct that. Lucy, <laughs> see, I cannot hear. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Billy, <laughs> Billy like, didn't okay. second that. Lucy did, but the vote was still 7-0. It still was. <laughs> okay, great. Any announcements of consideration for future agenda items? With none, we'll move into on item 9, adjournment. May I have that motion? We adjourn. Second. I can't hear it all, but I know there was a motion and a second. I think Tommy and I think One Lane, so two. there we go. And then with um, no public comment, we'll take a vote. All in favor for adjournment, say aye. 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 Motion approved. Thank you very much.